G'day and welcome to MW Laser, my name's Matthew. In this video for the Ruida series, we'll be having a look at cut optimization in RDWorks version 8. Cut optimization is used to reduce the time it takes to cut parts out on the laser machine. And one way it does this is by reducing the travel moves or the distance between the parts being cut during the laser off time. So we're here in RDWorks and we're going to be drawing some objects on the screen. And currently there's no path optimization or cut optimization settings enabled. So I'm going to place some stars on the screen and we can see here that the order I'm placing them is the four corners. Then we're going to go to the sides, the top, the bottom and then the middle. And if we uh, cut these out without any optimization, then we'll have a look at a simulation and see the total travel time taken for these to be cut out. So if we start our simulation, we can see that the laser is starting at the first star that we drew. And I'll just speed up the simulation so it doesn't take so long. And we can see it's now travelling down to the second star to cut it out. Now while it's doing that, you'll have a look at the top uh, right hand side of the screen. You can see that the total time for cutting these objects out of this work area is 5 minutes and 39 seconds. It also has an idle time or an idle distance there of 4174 millimeters. So that's the time that the laser is not firing between objects. And as you can see, it's not optimized for cutting and it's not the best path for the laser to be taking when it's cutting these objects out. So to improve our path optimization, down under the laser work on the right hand side of the screen, we have this box that we can tick or option we can tick called path optimize. And let's have a look at a simulation with this path optimization ticked. So we run our simulation again and we can see that it's starting at the upmost star. So the star point that is at the top of the screen. It's then working its way down to the lower stars. So if the point of the star is higher than the other one, it will still cut that star first. But you can see that it has reduced our total time to 5 minutes and 2 seconds and our idle time or idle distance of 3441 millimeters. So it has saved us some time, but there's further optimization that can be improved upon. So we can optimize that even further by using the block handle, which we'll find under the handle menu under cut optimize. Under block handle, we have the measurement in millimeters of five and a direction of our block from top to bottom. We can change that from up uh, bottom to top and left to right, right to left. So what that's actually doing is it's breaking down from the top and every five millimeters. So if there's an object within five millimeters, it would cut that first. It would then go down and cut everything within the next five millimeters. So if any object is uh, in that five millimeters, whether it's a five millimeter object or a hundred millimeter object, if part of that shape is in that block, it would cut it out. So in this case that we just saw, we saw it cut the center star first because it was higher than the second star over here on the right hand side. Now each one of these visual grid spacings I've set at 50 millimeters. So what we're going to do is actually use that for our block height. So I'm going to have our block height of 50 and the direction from top to bottom. So every 50 millimeters, if there's an object, it would cut those first. So let's have a look at a simulation of that now. And we see here now that it's cutting uh, from the uh, top down to the bottom, any object that is within that first 50 millimeters, it's then moving down and cutting the objects in the next block and so on. And this has reduced our total time down to three minutes and 59 seconds and our idle uh, distance of only 2,185 millimeters. So as you can see, we've got our block set at 50 millimeters. And I'm just for an example, I'm gonna move this star up a little bit and I'm gonna lower it just below uh, this one here. So it's still close to this star. And we'll do a simulation again and we'll have a look at the path that it's traveling. And we'll run that simulation and we can see that these two stars that are close together on the left hand side are not cut together. So it may not be the best option for cutting out but that is because the tip of the first star is lower than 50 millimeters of the first block. And we can uh, increase our block size if we wanted it to cut that way. And let's have a look at doing that now. So if we go back into our handle under cut optimize and we increase the height of our block to 100 millimeters and we say okay, and we do our simulation again, 
and we can see here on this simulation now that it's cutting those left hand stars first in that 100 millimeter block rather than the 50 and that's improved our cutting time even just slightly 3 minutes and 53 seconds and our idle time down to 2063 millimeters. Now there is something that I'd like to point out and that is on the toolbar here we have this option to show path and it is quite a handy little feature and it will show us the path that the laser is taking when it's cutting out these objects. However I've noticed that there is an inconsistency or an inaccuracy with this in that if we move objects around on the screen, for example if I take this star over here and move it way over here, we can see that the path it's taking on the screen shows that it's still cutting this first shape out rather than our block optimized path from top to bottom. Now if we do a preview on this, so we can see in the simulation here that it's still got our optimized path and it's cutting from the top down to bottom and the star that we move down is actually going to be one of the last stars that are cutting out, not the first. Now I have noticed that if we turn off the toggle and turn it back on, it doesn't automatically update. And the only way I found it to update here in uh, RD Works is go back into the handle under Cut Optimize and tick on and off a box that's in here and say OK. It then updates our path and we can see here it's showing the new updated path. It's just an inconsistency and something that should be noted if you are using this uh, button here, Show Path. So the block handle, if we've got the block handle set too large, then obviously it's going to select objects uh, in a much larger area or block from the top and would randomly cut those out in that order. In this example, I'm going to show you under the Cut Optimize, I have the block height set at 150. Now, each one of these visual spaces I've actually set to 50 so we can see what they are. So three of these, so this top section here, three would be one block and we'll cut all of those shapes out in any order that it finds the correct direction or path that it wants to take. And if we turn on this option here, show path, we can see here that it's cut this first shape moving down to the next, going back across and it's easier to see on the simulations. And we can see here on the simulation that it's cutting out uh, from the top to the bottom as we've told it in the block handle but it's now moved to the second row of stars rather than moving across the top row. That is because that second row is within that first 150 millimeters. And you can see as it moves to the top row it's actually skipped the third star then it goes back to it and travels back to the fourth or fifth on that side and it's actually increased our travel time. So we can see that the total time to cut this out would be 22 minutes and 48 seconds and it's got an idle time or idle distance there of nearly 5,000 millimeters. So if we actually stop this and we go back into the handle cut optimize and we reduce our block handle to what we want and in this case we want it to cut in blocks of 50 from the top. So I'm going to change this to 50 and say OK and now you can see automatically on the screen that the lines have drawn up and shown us where it's going to be cutting. So we can see here now in the simulation that it's actually optimized the cut path for us and that it's cutting across from the top down to the bottom. We can see that the idle travel distance has been reduced down to 4,441 millimeters and the time down to 22 minutes and 22 seconds. So it saves us a bit of laser off travel time and our job gets completed a lot quicker. So what we've been using here in these demonstration was just the block handle with the direction of up to bottom. So that is starting at the top and working its way to the bottom. The other options that we had were bottom to top, left to right and right to left. And you adjust these to suit whatever um, material or however you've set your laser up. So in this case if we want to go left to right we might select that option and we'll see that it changes our cut path to come down on the left hand side blocks and work its way to the right. So what I've got here is the same shapes but this time I've assigned different color layers to them and you can see those here over on the right hand side. We have the black, the red, blue and green. And we have the orders of our layer from top to bottom so we can see the black, red, blue, green. And that's the order it's going to cut. And for this I'm just going to show you the uh, show path tool and we can see that um, the show path is not showing the color order of our layers and this is why sometimes that this tool is not always uh, as useful as it seems. Again if we go into the handle, 
cut optimize and untick and retick order of layer we can see now that it's updated our cut path and we can see here that what it's doing is it's coming down cutting out the black layers first going all the way down the bottom and then going on to our red layers blue layers and then finally the green layer and we can see that in the simulation So when we have layers and if we still want them to cut out in our block area then what we need to do is turn off the handle under cut optimize order of layer. So if we now untick that box and say OK and we do our preview again we can see now that it would be cutting from top to bottom the way that it was doing before. I know I looked at uh, color layers and the order of layers in a previous video in this series but just to recap on that we have the color layer order down the side here black blue red green so that means it's going to cut in that order and if we have a look at a simulation of that we can see we cut the two rectangles first followed by the circle and then the ellipse so we'll do a preview and we can see a simulation that it moves past the circle and ellipse and then comes back and that's in the order of those color layers. Now to change the color layer order, say we want to go black, green, red, blue, then what we can do is select the green layer and make it priority down the bottom here of number two, which would move it to the second layer. We can then go down to the red layer and we can make it a priority of three and it would move it to the third layer and we'll leave the blue layer as priority four. There is one other way that you can rearrange these and that is by clicking on a layer and dragging it and you'll see a line that appears between the two layers so if i wanted to move this between the black and the green i'll move it up at the top and it will change the priority of the blue layer to two so you can drag objects or layers around or the easier way is just to select the color layer and then change the priority to the number that you'd like now if we do a preview we should be able to see that it's going to cut from left to right in that color layer order. So now I've got the stars and they've got internal shapes as well that need to be cut out and I've just randomly applied some layers to it. It's probably not how you would lay it out on your screen to cut out because uh, you might be cutting the same piece of material and there's no need to have all these different layers. But I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. So what we want is we'd want the inside shape to cut first followed by the outside shape. And as the uh, RDWorks is currently set up to cut in layer order, it would cut all the black layers first because of our color layer order list down here. And then it would go down our list and cut those out. So for example, this star at the top here, it would cut the outside of it first rather than the inside. Now, if we have a look at a simulation of that, just to start with, and you can see uh, what I mean, it's cut that outside shape first that shape could fall out and then when it comes back to cut the inside it's out of focus and wouldn't cut correctly. Now there is a handle under here under cut optimize that says cut inside to outside and if we tick that and say OK when we do our preview we'll see that it really hasn't fixed our problem. It still cut the outside first and hasn't cut the inside and that is because the inside shape is on a different layer and different layer color order. So what we need to do is also go into the handle under cut optimize and turn off the order of layer. Leave the inside and outside on and it's cutting from the in inside to the outside and say OK. Now if we do our preview we can see that it's cutting all the inside shapes before it cuts the outside. So this is just something to bear in mind if you're using different layers and different colors for your cutting order that we need to have a look at our optimization settings under handle cut optimize to see whether we're cutting in the order of layer or whether we're cutting inside to outside. So let's have a look at uh, the handle again under cut optimize and we've got the order of layer unticked and inside to outside ticked as well and we also have this option unticked which is start point optimize and let's have a look at the cut path for that and if we zoom in we can see that the lasers come down from the left hand side to the uh, inside star and cut that out. Once it's finished it's moved to the outside point of this star down here and cut the outside out. So we could see that it could reduce the travel path by just going down to another point that's close to it. 
And what we can do with that option is go into the handle again, go into cut optimize, and we can go start point optimize and tick the box and say OK. We can see now that it's come down and it's, it's also reduced the uh, distance that it's traveled. So it's selected a different point to start on the inside star, but it's also selected this corner of the um, outside star as well. Now cutting corners on a star, it's always good to see if you can try cutting on an inside uh, incline rather than the outside point of a star. It just gives us a crisper cut because sometimes we can get bad cuts if it's finishing off on that corner. So another option that we can do is go into the handle, cut optimize, and change it from single inner to outer and select find cutting port. And we say OK, and this will also gray out this option down the bottom, which is start point optimize, because it would find its own. And when we click OK, it finds and reduces the time traveled. So it comes down to the first inside corner of the uh, inside star and then moves to the outside corner closest to it. So it's reduced the traveling distance as well. So rather than coming all the way down to the right hand side of this shape, cutting it out, then moving down to the left hand side of the other shape, it's reduced the travel time. So that was under handle, cut optimize, and we have the option find cutting port. So in this part I want to show you how some of those settings can adjust uh, the speed of our cuts uh, even with just a few simple shapes like this. So for example I'll show you what our current handle is set at. Our cut optimize handle is set to order of layer, inside to outside and single inner to outer find cutting port and the options down the bottom have been greyed out. Now we say OK to that. And if we have a look at our simulation, we can see that to cut this out is going to be 5 minutes and 39 seconds and an idle time of 2,115 millimeters. Now if we have a look at the handle again and go into cut optimize and we untick this inside to outside and now what we want to do is do a start point optimize and that will change it so that rather than choosing the outside points of shapes or anything like that, it tries to find the inside points of our shapes and then goes to the inside point of another shape um, rather than uh, having them on the outside points. So that would um, reduce our cutting time or increase our cutting time in this case to 5 minutes and 48 seconds. And we also have an idle distance of 2300 millimeters. So there's one other way that you can increase the speed but not actually optimize the cutting point and that is under handle, cut optimize and we can untick the box for the start point optimize and tick the box that says auto determine the start point and direction. Now this is designed to decrease the amount of travel time between cutting of shapes. So we had um, 5 minutes and 40 something seconds and now if we do a preview with this new optimized point we can see that it's reduced it to 5 minutes and 28 seconds. The other thing that this has done is it has gone back to selecting the outside shapes because they are closer and it's less travel distance for him to cut that shape out. So it may not be the best uh, final result but it's actually the quicker result for you when you're cutting shapes out on your laser machine. Thanks for visiting MW Laser. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial on cut optimization in RD Works. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay tuned for more videos in the Ruida series and other laser videos in the future. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, take care. Cheers.